While you're turning to John 10, I want to concentrate on the 27th verse uh, for a few minutes. While you're turning, I was reminded this week of what used to be a commercial in the 1970s for a brokerage firm called E.F. Hutton. And the punchline of the commercial was, when E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. When E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. Well, when God speaks, everyone ought to listen, but actually only a relatively few do. That's sad. When God spoke to Abraham, as we've already seen this morning, he did so through a physical appearance, and he spoke audibly to him. Well, how does God speak now? And how do we know the difference between our human thoughts and God speaking to us? Those are a couple of the questions that I want to try to answer in just several minutes. So, Lord, for this to happen, we need you to undertake once again. And Holy Spirit of God, author of this book that we're looking at, and... Uh, the one that lives in us, we are depending completely upon you. And by faith, I take your enabling power. And I thank you for undertaking for me that Christ might be exalted through it all in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to just turn your attention to that 27th verse of John chapter 10. Jesus' words, he says... Read it with me. My sheep hear my voice, and they know me, and I, I, I know them, and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Aren't you glad that God knows you? You're a sheep. He knows you. Two things I want you to see here. First of all, God speaks, obviously, if his sheep hear his voice. God speaks. Secondly, you listen. God speaks, you listen. My sheep hear my voice. God's voice. Actually, in the context here, it is Jesus' voice, that second person of the triune God. But did you know who now speaks in Jesus' stead, in Jesus' voice? I would just jump over, listen to this. John chapter 14, verse 26, Jesus said, When the Comforter, capital C, meaning the Holy Spirit, the one called alongside of us, the one who is Jesus' substitute on earth in this current world that we're living in, when the Comforter is come, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So the Holy Spirit is Jesus' voice currently. Just a, a couple of chapters over in uh, John chapter 16 and verse 13, Jesus also said this, how be it, he said, you know, I have a lot more that I have to say to you, but you're not ready for it now. How be it? However, when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. So he shall not speak from himself, from himself as the, as the key source, but rather whatsoever things he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. In other words, he is going to be my spokesman. The Holy Spirit is going to be my spokesman. God speaks. It's Jesus' voice, but it's the Holy Spirit that speaks for Jesus. How does he do that? If God spoke audibly, and God spoke in physical presence with Abraham, how does he speak to us? Well, not like that, obviously. That would certainly be an exception. But God speaks to us in two ways. God speaks to us objectively through the Bible. Let's call that the Holy Spirit's wisdom because the Bible came 
to us through the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that holy men of God were moved upon, were carried along by the Holy Ghost. That's how we got our Bible. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. So God speaks to us, first of all, objectively through the Bible, which is the Holy Spirit's wisdom. And the Holy Spirit's wisdom found in the Bible is primarily addressed to our minds. The Spirit of God illuminates our minds through the Bible. I don't have time to turn there, but 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verses 9 to 16, but specifically verses 9 and 10, the Bible tells us that I have not seen nor ear heard, nor hath it entered into the heart of man what God hath prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed these things unto us, and he has done so through his Spirit. So God speaks objectively through the Bible. It's the Holy Spirit's wisdom, and the Holy Spirit illumines our mind and that results in a spiritual invigorating of our mind with the Word of God so that the eyes of our understanding are opened and we are, we are renewed in the spirit of our mind. You got that? God speaks. He speaks objectively through the Bible, which is the Holy Spirit's wisdom. And so the believer seeking God in connection with and, and experiencing the Holy Spirit making the Bible come alive has a revealing of the living word to their heart. That's God's speaking. That is God's speaking. That is God's voice. What he says to you through the Holy Spirit that comes alive from the word of God that is God giving you the ability then to discern the Holy Spirit's voice in whatever way he will lead you. All right? God speaks. He speaks, first of all, objectively through the Bible. That's the Holy Spirit's wisdom. Secondly, God speaks subjectively to the human spirit. That's the Holy Spirit's witness. Not his wisdom, but his witness. That's found in Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. We are the children of God. We have the spirit of God, the spirit of adoption resident in our hearts. And he, he witnesses to us in our heart, in our spirit, in our human spirit. He witnesses to us that we are the children of God. He speaks to us in our human spirit that we belong to God, that we're his children. So this is the subjective way that God speaks, and he speaks to the human spirit, and it's the Holy Spirit's witness. It is primarily addressed to your spirit, but it's in conjunction with the mind because the Holy Spirit resides in your human spirit. He resides in your human spirit to convince you so that you know so he works from your spirit to your mind that you know, not just feel, but that you know, that you know what God has to say to you as an individual. Now, that's pictured, it could be pictured in several ways. First of all, the spirit's witness to us is like light. It's like Nothing's clear. It's dark. But the Holy Spirit's witness to our spirit in conjunction with working in our mind brings clarity. It's like the light goes on. God gives you light. Also, it could be pictured by life. When the Spirit of God witnesses to your human spirit, not only does it give light, he gives life. It gives empowerment. It gives vitality to your human spirit. It could also be pictured as liberating, as liberty. 
when the Holy Spirit of God subjectively speaks to your human spirit and, and uh, in conjunction with your mind gives you understanding, it's liberating. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. It's uncoerced. It's unforced. It's natural. It's genuine. It's sincere. It's real. It could also be pictured as a lift. When the Holy Spirit of God witnesses to your spirit, I'm telling you, it gives you a bit of an emotional lift. I'm not saying ecstasy necessarily, but there is a lift in your spirit. When God the Holy Spirit connects with your human spirit and you understand what he's leading you to do, there's, oh, there's a relief there as well as a, just a joy that comes when you know it's the Lord. So God speaks. The verse that we're basing this off of, John 10, 27, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. God speaks. He has a voice. He speaks, and he speaks two ways. He speaks objectively through the Bible. That's the Holy Spirit's wisdom, and he speaks subjectively to the human spirit. That's the Holy Spirit's witness. Question here is, my sheep hear my voice. Are you listening? God speaks, we listen. Are you listening? Are you one of those few that are listening to what God has to say? God's speaking in those two ways primarily. Are you listening? You have the Word of God resident in you. Paul says it this way. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. That is, that word dwell is the same word for the Holy Spirit residing or inhabiting our human spirit. Dwell in you richly, that is copiously, abundantly, plenteously. Let the word of Christ, of Messiah, inhabit you copiously. Fill you with God's wisdom. That's how you know if you're listening. Is the Word of God resident in you? That's more than just having a time out every day where you read the Bible. Does the Word of God dwell in you richly? Is the Word of God residing in you? In all of your waking moments, And then, if you're listening, not only will the Word of God be resident in you, but you will be walking dependent. The Word of God will be resident, and you will be walking dependent. And I'm thinking of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 25. Paul says, if you live in the Spirit, walk ye in the Spirit. That is, the difference between living in the Spirit and walking... You live in the Spirit. If you're a believer, at the point of salvation, you are placed in the realm of the Spirit. You live in the Spirit, whether you are conscious of it or not. You live in the Spirit of your believer. But the key here is walk in the Spirit. Take each step in dependence upon the Holy Spirit to direct you, to enable you to live a victorious, obedient life to God. To live in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's how you know you're listening. God speaks, you listen. And you know you listen if the Word of God is resident and if you're walking dependent. Two keys, two cues. Let me quote from George Mueller. I'm almost done. He said, I will seek the will of the Spirit of God through or in connection with the Word of God. The Spirit and the Word must be combined. If I look to the Spirit alone without the Word, I lay myself open to great delusions. If the Holy Spirit guides us at all, He will do it according to the Scriptures and never contrary to them. George Mueller said that. Some people 
believers minimize the specific leading of the Holy Spirit, and they only point to the Bible. Let me say this. The key to life as a believer is the Word of God and the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God without the Word of God is delusion. But the Word of God without the Spirit of God is deadness. However, combining the Word of God and the Spirit of God, there is dynamic. Have you ever driven... Have you ever driven a car in a place with no street lights at night? And let me add to that, and one of your headlights is out? What a hindrance that is, and even dangerous. Because both headlights have to be on high beam in a situation like that, or you could end up crashing. But if you have both headlights on high beam, it's most likely that you'll end up in your destination safely. Let me apply it this way. You and I live in an extremely dark time. And you can't trust that uh, you can't trust what you read or what you see in the media. You need both headlights on high beam shining together to navigate through life. You need the bright beam of the Word of God illuminating you through the bright beam of the Holy Spirit in your human spirit, communicating to your mind, understanding that your mind might be renewed. Got your lights on? Your high beams on? God speaks. You listen? The Word of God, resident and then also walking dependent, that is the Spirit of God leading and enabling. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, may the simple things that we've just shared be enlightening. Holy Spirit of God, may you use these things to teach us how to discern your voice because Jesus, you're speaking to us, your sheep, and we're supposed to hear, we're supposed to listen, and that's supposed to provoke a right and proper response, and I pray that to be the case. Take these things and continue to use them, even though this message is, is brief and over. Seal it in our hearts. Use it online if you see fit. In Jesus' name, amen.